the 1970s, our celestial neighbour Neptune has always believed to be this colour, a deep ocean blue. But a recent study has decided that this is all wrong. Neptune is actually more like this, a pale duck egg colour. But wait, not so long ago, astronomers also thought the colour of the universe was turquoise. And then a year later, they retracted this. They changed their minds, and now we think that the universe is a cosmic latte. It seems like astronomers have no idea what colour even is. But why is it so difficult to get colour right? I mean, are we in the same situation as those viral debates of, is this dress white and gold or blue and black? And are these trainers pink and white or turquoise and grey? Well, it turns out that in astronomy, colour can indeed be somewhat misleading. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Lou, and this is a lie, and this is also a lie. Here's why. <coughs> to understand how colour works in space, we first have to realise how colour works for us. The colour we see around us comes from light that is visible to us. And this is just a small segment of all the light in the universe. This light is made up of a rainbow of colours that we call a spectrum. But actually this visible spectrum only covers wavelengths between 390 nanometers and 700 nanometers. Beyond the visible spectrum, beyond the purple, lies ultraviolet light or UV light, which is too short of a wavelength for us to see. And beyond the red is infrared light, which has too large of a wavelength for us to process. When we see white light, this is when you have equal saturation in all of the colours. And that's why when we split the light through a prism, we get a rainbow. But to actually see this colour at the back of our eyes, we have rods and cones. These cells, these cones, are responsible for seeing colour. We have three types of cones for red, green and blue wavelength light. Our brain then combines the ratios of these three different light colours together to allow us to see over a million different colours. The colours used in our TVs and most digital devices are based on the human eye's perception of colour. They combine RGB or red, green and blue light together to get all the colours that we see on our screens. In astronomy, however, we generally don't care about colour images. They're only really used to make pretty pictures for outreach and public engagement. Real astronomers spend their time looking at boring black and white images. These images are taken by cameras that only capture light in some small segment of the spectra, aka that rainbow we saw earlier. These are called bands, and they do this by placing a filter in front of the camera detectors to block out all but the small range of wavelengths that we're interested in. For example, a filter might only let red light to pass through, resulting in an image showing how the object looks in red light. And this is absolutely fine for astronomers because the spectrum isn't just visible light, but astronomical objects might also emit or reflect light in the radio, infrared, UV, X-ray or gamma rays. Each of these bands can reveal different characteristics of a celestial object. For example, infrared light is really sensitive to celestial dust. Since these wavelengths are invisible to us, to get a colour image of an object, astronomers will often have to capture images in three different filters and then assign them to the RGB colours. This process is known as false colour imaging. But to get the true colour of an object, really what we need to do is to capture all of the light of an object, regardless of what wavelength it's emitting at. our skies are blue because our atmosphere scatters blue light towards our eyes. And the same goes for Uranus and Neptune. Their atmospheres are mostly methane gas which scatters blue light, so we kind of expect to see them as blue. They're also similar in size and mass, so it's always been a bit of a mystery as to why Neptune seems to be a dark blue, whereas Uranus seems to be a bit more pale. But to capture the colour of these planets for ages, we were relying on Voyager 2 data. This spacecraft was launched back in the summer of 1989. That was before I was born. She's so old. On board were a narrow angle and a wide angle camera, which were able to take images in various bands. 
and that's what it did. It took images in these various bands and combined them together to get a color image. Now, here's the problem. When they did this for Neptune, they didn't combine the different segments of light equally because they wanted to enhance the features of the clouds on Neptune more. So they ended up with this much bluer, richer image. Now, a new study has redone this analysis with new data with the Hubble Space Telescope, and this covers a much broader wavelength range in spectra, so larger chunks of that rainbow. When you combine the colors now, you get a much more pale blue Neptune, more similar to Uranus. And they find the same result even if you use data from completely different telescopes like the very large telescope, the VLT. I bet you're wondering why we even care. Well, to be honest, the exact color is important, but really I mean the spectra because it not only tells you what chemicals are present on the planet, but also things like the planetary activity, the clouds, the temperatures, pressures, all of which will affect the exact hue of this planet. But that's not the end of the story. Back in 2002, a team of astronomers were hoping to measure the average color of the universe by aggregating the light from over 200,000 galaxies. Young, blue, old, red, spirals, all sorts, into a single composite. But this was no easy task. The process involved measuring light from galaxies across a range of wavelengths. And since light has to travel vast distances to reach us, it also gets stretched into longer and redder wavelengths due to the expansion of the universe. This is known as redshift. And it's something that they had to correct for so that they could get the right color as seen from closer to Earth. Their cosmic spectrum, combining all the wavelengths of all these galaxies, made up of 200,000 galaxy spectra, was fed through a color matching computer program to convert it to a single color visible to us humans. The answer was turquoise. The universe, on average, is turquoise. But wait, just a year later, they found a problem. In the program that they'd used, they hadn't set the white balance properly. And this error, once fixed, meant that the average color of the universe was not turquoise at all, but instead a boring beige. They named it Cosmic Latte. As the universe continues to age and evolve, the average color is actually expected to change. Young hot stars that burn blue and white dominate the light in the early universe. But as these stars grow older, they die out, they're replaced by older, cooler stars that burn red and yellow. This shift means that the universe's average color will eventually get redder over time. This last example really highlights how difficult color can be. The calibration of instruments, the processing of data can further affect the final color of an astronomical image. Different telescopes and different sensors might have various sensitivities to different colors, and the software used to process the images might enhance or suppress certain hues. The colors of astronomical images are a blend of true visual representation, scientific interpretation, and technological limitations. Just like the debate over the color of a dress or a pair of trainers, the perceived color of celestial objects can depend on how the data is collected and processed. And generally, as astronomers, we don't really care. It's not that we're clueless about colors. The task of accurately representing these colors of the universe and the objects in it is very complex. That's all for this week's video. As always, thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.